So is there proof of one's salvation? I mean, surely if you're saved by grace through faith, there's got to be some result, some evidence, some manifestation of one's salvation, right? Can we know that we have eternal life? I mean, can we really know for sure? Good thing for you and me, the Bible assures us that we can be sure about our salvation. So, is salvation something we can really be sure of? Absolutely. And that's where the Bible comes in. So let's talk about the role of the Bible and see what it says in 1 John chapter 5. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. God promised eternal life to believers through His Word, the Bible. According to God's Word, He has given eternal life to all who believe in His Son. So it is possible to know and to be sure that we have eternal life. And these verses were written precisely for that purpose. Because it is God's promise and it is written in His Word, a believer can be sure of eternal life. And here's a really good illustration to drive home that point. You see, one of the most powerful illustrations of the certainty of our relationship with Christ is his story about the Good Shepherd from John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, he is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. The wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I, Jesus said, am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. This passage shows how Jesus wants us to be sure and secure of our salvation. When we put our faith in Him, we enjoy a relationship with Him that makes our salvation certain. Jesus is our good shepherd. The good shepherd will not abandon his sheep, the hired hand will abandon the sheep when there's danger, but Jesus, the Good Shepherd, He will give up His life to protect the sheep. He knows His sheep very well, and this is the kind of relationship we have with Him, our Good Shepherd. Look at what else He says. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of My hand. My Father, who has given them to Me, is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of My Father's hands. I and the Father are one. This passage gives us assurance and security in our relationship with Christ. It tells us that we are in the hands of Jesus and of His Father, and no one can take us away. We can be sure of having eternal life because the penalty for our sins has been fully paid for. Now let's talk about having a new life in Christ. One way to be confident of our relationship with Jesus is to see tangible evidence of a transformed life. When you and I become believers of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us we become a new creation. Listen to what it says from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. So is it really possible to have a changed life? Is there proof that the cross can eventually triumph in our lives? Well, let's listen to these stories. I grew up in a broken family and I had so much hatred from my father. My life consisted of alcohol, drugs, sex, and prison. I got involved in murder and gang rape, car napping, and robbery. I got my girlfriend pregnant at 18 and she eventually became my wife after five years of living together. I was an unfaithful husband, an irresponsible provider, and a careless father. At my lowest point, a case of frustrated homicide was filed against me. My wife was the one who took me in and showed me nothing but kindness and unconditional love. Because of this, I agreed to go with her to church and in January of 2001, I surrendered my life to God. 
After three years of separation, God restored our marriage. But what God did in my husband's life was far more than what I had originally prayed for. On the very day I accepted Christ, all desires for my vices were replaced with love for my family and God. The Lord started using me more and more, first as a D-group leader and eventually a youth coordinator and a pioneer of the Biahe Jail Ministry. In 2005, I was commissioned as a youth pastor of CCF East, in 2008, pastor of CCF Taitai, and now I oversee seven CCF East churches. I thank God for His amazing grace, for restoring my family, and for giving us the opportunity to serve Him. I grew up in a slums in Manila. During that time, I saw the reality of poverty in our country. I said to myself, I have no way to go but up because I have seen uh, what life really is. That's why I, I dream big for our country and in my young heart, I saw myself helping our country someday. That's why when I had the opportunity to, to enter the military, I grabbed it. I entered PMA in 1991 and I, that's when my career in the military started. On July 27, 2003, together with my companions, uh, we took over a hotel in our, uh, our country's main business district and called upon our people to help us and support us take over the government. I thought that I had our country in the palm of my hands. I asked our people to support us, but, but our, our uprising did not really materialize. And finally, we surrendered. Uh, and because of that, I was thrown in prison. But inside prison, I, I learned to call on God again. But every night before I sleep, I ask Him, why is it that a person like me is the one who is in prison? Uh, instead of those people who are doing bad things to our country. I kept asking Him about His sense of fairness. And finally, uh, He sent a classmate of mine from PMA. They started ministering to us inside prison. And because of that, uh, the blinders that uh, obscured my vision was finally lifted. And I saw the mistakes that I have done in accordance to what God, uh, God's Word says. No? After my release from prison, I joined a Christian organization dedicated to raising leaders who will uh, make an impact to our society. I wanted to change the world. I wanted to change our country. I wanted to change our armed forces. True change can really happen by sharing the Word of God one soul at a time and let God's transforming power work in our lives. The stories we just heard speak about the transforming power of Christ. If He can transform those people, He can transform you and me. So what signs should we be looking for if we claim to be new creations in Jesus Christ? You see, if we claim to be new creatures in Christ, surely there has to be some kind of sign, some proof that say we are the new creations we claim to be. Because many people will say, I'm a believer of Jesus, but their life will show otherwise. What should we be looking for? Let's talk about just two things that we read from 1 John chapter 2. We know that we have come to know Him if we obey His commands. The man who says, I know Him, but does not do what He commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. This passage we just read talks about obedience, and that's the first sign of a new creature in Christ. It simply means that our lives should be characterized by consistent obedience to the word of God. It also implies that we should have a desire to spend time and read His commandments so that we can obey them in daily life. Now let's talk about the second sign, and that is love. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. These verses tell us about how we should relate to other people. And very simply they say, we should love one another. Easier said than done, I know. But you see, our love for our brothers and sisters 
That is the proof that we are indeed in the light. Our love is the demonstration of our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You and I have been talking about living our new life in Christ. The challenge now is to keep living that life consistently. You see, as it is by grace that we are saved, so it is also by grace that we are able to live our new life in Christ. Now here's our last verse. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. That was from Titus chapter 2. Folks, you see, our Christian lives are testimonies of God's grace at work. True believers will be transformed by the grace of God. But while we will never be perfect, we who have a relationship with Christ will continue to grow in what we call Christ-likeness. Now, as you go through your workbook, reflect on the work of God in your life. Ask yourself if you're beginning to see changes take place. And I pray that you will find proof of a new life in Christ. Enjoy your discussion and God bless.